Hello and welcome to Be a Tier German Engineer. Explains oxygen not included. Today we are ranching pips. Yes, that is the plan for today. But on top of that, we will do a couple other things as well. For example, we will learn how to create those natural tiles here in three different possible ways. And on top of that, we will take a little bit of a closer look at the arbor tree up here. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are. And before we get started with this wonderful build here, here's a quick disclaimer. You will find a link in the description down below to a written guide. And this guide is what provided me with this particular build right here. It is a really well thought out build and it makes perfect sense. I'm just here to explain it and the full credit goes to the creator of this build. But now let's pause the game and then let's turn our overlay back on and let's see what we have here. First of all, what is this room here? Let's take a look. It is of course a stable with a room size of 96 tiles and it has 8 critters in it. 8 fully grown pips to be precise and that is exactly the maximum amount of pips that a 96 tile farm supports. What exactly do we need in here? All we need is a grooming station as well as a critter drop off. We don't need a feeder or a shearing station or anything like that. These here are the only two buildings that we need for our pips to be happy. So what else do we have in here? We have a couple conveyor loaders as well as three auto sweepers and when we take a look at the reach we can always reach this tile right here at the bare minimum on the left on the right and right here as well and with this auto sweeper we can reach this one tile up here in the corner as well all of that is important or up here your dirt will pile up you're probably wondering where's the dirt coming from so let's take a look at the pips themselves we have our pips right here that's what they look like as little babies and that's what they look like when they are fully grown up they have a comfortable range of 10 degrees to 20 degrees celsius and a livable range of negative 30 to 70 degrees it's a relatively wide range i think almost everybody should be able to accommodate that so what is their diet? We have 0.4 units per cycle of arbitrary and we get 20 kilograms of dirt out of it. We can also feed them thimble reeds and we will also get 20 kilograms of dirt out of it. That is going to be important later. As you can clearly see, this here is the Arbor Tree build. And you can also potentially see right here that I can actually select those branches here all one by one. Also this one here on the top and this one here on the right. And how to build this here is a little bit more complicated than just plopping it in. So let's take a quick look at that. Over here I have planted more arbor trees just so I can show it. So let's take a look at the arbor trees themselves. And when we can take a look in here they have a life cycle of 4.5 cycle. That is if they are actually domesticated. If not it's actually 18. A temperature of 15 to 40 degrees. An air pressure of 150 grams minimum. And if they are domesticated they would need dirt and polluted water. 70 kilograms a cycle of polluted water that is a lot of polluted water that we would have to put in here but we also get 300 kilograms of lumber out of it but that is not what we are doing today what we're doing is these here are actually wild and we can see they have now this life cycle of 18 cycles the 18 cycles are double split one is the actual tree trunk in the middle that needs 18 cycles to grow and then we have those individual branches right here and you can kind of see here this tree here has four one here one here one here and one there. That is what that looks like. But a tree can support up to five. And to get the maximum out of it, we need to build ladders in between them up until the tree trunk is grown and the branches actually start to grow. As soon as that happens, we can come in here and get rid of these ladders. And that is exactly what I'm doing right now. So let's do that and then let's run the game. And we should be able to see that now another little tree piece is sprouting from every single tree. Now we have five. This one here just grew. The one in the middle here also has five. And this one here has also five. And in one tile can only be one of those branches. If we don't put the ladders in and therefore block those trees on the left and on the right to grow inwards, then the middle one will not be able to reach all five branches. That is important for efficiency, just something on the side, but that is all you're going to hear about the trees today. Back to our pip farm. And here we are at our pip farm once again and let's take a look in the overlay for shipping. You can see we are just coming straight through here. Here we have a conveyor rail. Up here we have a conveyor bridge. A, another conveyor loader up here on the top. Then a conveyor chute right here and a conveyor chute right there. So what is this setup here? Well, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. I want to filter out the eggs and put them right here so I can actually then put them into the incubator and everything that's not an egg, I want to shovel over here and down to there. And when we have excess eggs, our auto sweeper right here will pick them up because our incubator right here has a priority of 9 and our conveyor loader has a priority of 5. 
So the incubator will always be loaded first. And if the incubator is full, then we will put it into the conveyor loader and ship it off. Of course, in reality, in a real base, it will go much further than right here. This here is just as an example for obvious reasons. And when we take a look at our auto sweeper right here, our auto sweeper has enough range to accommodate up to three of those incubators right here as well. So you can actually expand this here if you want to. Other than that, that is really it already. Our pips are just in here living happily. And the nice thing about having a little pip farm like this here is you will get lumber out of it for free because they can nowhere near eat all of this stuff here. I mean, we are producing way, way more than eight pips can ever eat. So that is the nice thing. You get a little bit of extra lumber. And at the same time, you can just wrangle the pip and transport him wherever you want, whenever you need one. That is always a good thing to have in case you want to create, for example, a nature reserve. But this is the standard setup for a pip farm. On to the next one. And here we have another pip farm that looks exactly the same as the last one. But there's one big difference and we can see it right here. We have here thimble reeds. So what exactly is the difference between using arbor trees and thimble reeds? Let's take a look at a pip here and let's see. We can see egg chances. We have a pip egg chance of 71% and a cuddle pip egg of 29%. Yes, the cuddle pips were just added in the last update a couple weeks ago. So those are brands banking new. And you can see also that it says here, this probability increases when the creature eats thimble reeds. So if you want to have cuddle pips, that is the way to do it. But also there is a relatively interesting restriction on how pips actually plant stuff. So let's take a look at that. Right here, I planted a little thimble reed and around here I built a little box out of conductive wires and you can see it's not actually square. So what exactly is going on here? Let's take a look. You can see I built it from the tile where we planted it, five to the right, six to the bottom, six to the left and five to the top. In this area here can be up to two plants. And if there are more than two, a pip will not plant anything in here. So what does that mean in a practical sense? When we remember what our layout looked like, we have a plant right here, 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 and so on and so forth. Every other tile is a plant and every other tile from that is just nothing. So if we build from the right to the left, then we can actually do it. Because just with this example right here, we would have a plant right here. And I'm just going to delete the pile where we have a plant. Here would be a plant and here would be a plant. So we have two, but not three. A third one can be planted right here. At this point, another one will not be planted in this area because we have violated what we need. If we plant it the other way around, you can see we have six right here. So we would have one here, one here, one here, and one here. On the left side, it does not work. And that is, of course, what we need to avoid. So how do we do this? It's pretty simple and straightforward. Where we don't want to build, we just take a piece of ladder and act like we are building it. Here, I'm actually in sandbox mode, so it's getting built immediately. But at the same time, if you are not in this mode, then you can't just set it to a priority of one and never actually build it. Just having it planned right here is enough for a plant to never grow. That is important to keep in mind. If you don't do that, you will not be able to grow it. Always go from the right to the left. But let's go back where we came from real quick. Here we are. So you would literally put a piece of ladder. Let's grab us a piece of ladder everywhere. Right here, 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 and right there. In every one of those cases, actually right here as well, I said a ladder, please, thank you. Just like this, imagine there is no thimble read right now. And then we plant this one. As soon as that pip puts something in there, we cancel the build of this ladder. Wait until the pip puts something in here and then cancel this one and so on and so forth until we made it all the way over to the left. And that is exactly what that should look like. And that is how you build this. And we will do that in practice here in a very, very short time. But first of all, how did I get all this copper ore in here? Yes, this was not spawned by me in sandbox mode. That was actually created in a real game environment. So let's take a look at the three different methods how we can do that. And right here we have a little bit of a construct and I will show you how it's done. Let's take the one on the very right over here. Here we can see we have a manual airlock. This one here is built out of steel, doesn't really matter that much. And it has tiles all around it, all around it except the top. 
And that is the important part. If you build it like this, you can also chain it together, which is shown here on the left. And just so you're aware from right to left, we have gold, we have iron, we have cobalt, we have aluminum, and we have copper ore. In that particular order, it doesn't really matter. I just chose whatever because it makes no difference. So let me spawn in some dupes and show you how we can create natural tiles. And here now I have spawned in the dupes for this little experiment. We have Magenta, Croivac, Cromulent Green, Eric Bogger, Dan Shiv, and Satsay sorted from the left to the right by the length of their wonderful YouTube membership. Thank you very much for supporting me directly, guys. I really, really appreciate it. So let's get started. What we need to do is we just need to deconstruct each and every one of them. So let's make a little bit of a race out of it and let's see. May the best dupe win. And it looks like it's going to be neck on neck. Who is going to win this race? And it is Chromulent Green. I can literally not tell. I believe Magenta, Chromulent Green and Satsay won. And you can also see right here. That is exactly what I intended, if you believe it or not, because it does not work every single time. So what do you do when it doesn't work? Well, you pick up the metal ore, it's exactly 200 kilograms. And if we take a look what our manual airlock door costs, yes, it's 200 kilograms. You are losing nothing. All you have to do is to try it again. So we're going to pause the game. We're going to get rid of the gold right here. And then, for example, we're going to grab another one, make it out of gold, plop it into here, and then once again, give the deconstruct command. And then we will see if it works on the second try. And here we have it, and you can see now we have created a natural tile. Again, it does not work every single try, but usually it works on the second, maximum on the third try. I don't think it has ever taken me longer than three tries. And that is how you make natural tiles out of manual airlocks. Let's move on to the next method. And right here we have our second method. So let's take a look what we have. We have a pitcher pump here on the left, where that is in your base, of course, does not matter. And we have a bottle emptier. And then down here we have algae. And algae we have on the left here 100 kilograms. And on the right we have 100 grams. Just to show you that the weight really doesn't make that big of a difference. So what are we going to do? We're going to use something like crude oil that we can heat up really nicely. Currently it's set to 200 degrees Celsius. That may be a little bit hot. Let's make it 150. That's fine. And let's plop it into here. Next on the list, we will need a dupe. So let's grab a dupe and spawn a random dupe right here. A bottle emptier is set to auto bottle with a number nine priority and crude oil. So let's see. Camille comes and puts in the crude oil. And what we can see here is that our algae is heating up. The right here should heat up a hell of a lot faster than the left, just because of the difference in mass. And as soon as we reach 125 degrees Celsius, we will see what happens. And here we have it. We have created two dirt tiles. We can now stop to actually put more of that stuff in there. Yeah, there we go. And we can also get rid of Camille so she doesn't complain over here. We can create dirt tiles made out of algae by heating them up to over 125 degrees Celsius. And the oil is just an example. There are several ways how you can heat up your algae to 125 degrees. And I'm about to show you another way how to do that. But first of all, let's get rid of all this stuff right here so we can take a closer look at it. We're going to say clear floor. Let's get rid of this. And then we will actually just mop the floor. And we can see we have here 100 grams worth of dirt. And here we have 100 kilograms worth of dirt and it makes no difference the pip will plant on here just as fine makes no difference whatsoever let's move on to our third method and here we have our third and last build. So let's take a look at what we have here. First of all, of course, we have your metal tiles, as you can see, built out of aluminum in this particular case. And on top of that, we have algae, a tiny, tiny little amount, 100 grams to be precise. We also have some fertilizer just to show you it also works with fertilizer. On top of that, it even works with slime, but slime outgasses and is usually harder to handle. So usually I would recommend fertilizer for later in the game when you've used all your algae up so you can actually produce oxygen or if you don't have access to algae at all. But both of them work perfectly fine so on the right we have more algae as well then down here i have some crude oil why crude oil well because we can heat it up to 125 degrees without anything crazy going wrong with it for example water would turn to steam for obvious reasons so we have also a liquid tepidizer in here that is hooked up to power and to a signal switch so let's see what happens we turn it on and it heats up and the liquid tepidizer has a maximum temperature or better to say a target temperature of 85 degrees celsius so as soon as our crude oil in here hits 85 degrees celsius it will automatically turn off and that will happen here any second let's speed it up a little bit and we will see without me doing anything it turns off we need to get to 125 degrees how would we do that 
well, we can cheese the game just a tiny little bit with the switch right here. I can turn it off and back on and we can see that it turns back on and it puts a little bit more heat into here. Now we're at 91.4 degrees. So, so let's do it one more time. And now we're at 91.9 degrees. And once again, and once again, and once again, and let's see what we have now. Now we have 95 degrees. So we can just do this a few times, maybe 20 or 30 times is what is required. And then we will have our temperature reached. So let me do that. And then we will see what happens to our tiles up here. And here we had it. Oh, did you see that? All three tiles immediately went up there. And our crude oil is now at 128.9 degrees. Isn't that something? We barely made it because at 125 degrees, we will not be able to go higher. So even if I keep turning it on and off and on and off and on and off, nothing will happen. Here we are now at 128.5, but that is the end of it. Nothing will happen anymore, no matter what I do. So 125 is the max and we can maybe get it just a couple degrees higher. And that is all that is needed to actually get our tiles you converted and that is what we did and we have now three wonderful dirt tiles right here created with a liquid tepidizer this setup here is obviously a hell of a lot more complicated than it should be but it works i just wanted to show you guys that it works even though i would always strongly recommend the version with the manual airlocks Right here, I have a completely empty farm and here we will try to build it one by one by one manually. So let's take a quick look. We are going to put in one extra tile high in every single one of those. Of course, for me, it goes a little bit faster than it will for you guys because it gets built instantly. But everything I'm doing here is absolutely and even very easily doable in a normal game. Then we're going to spawn in a handful of duplicates, kind of something like this here. Don't mind the ones that actually don't show up. And then we will tell them to deconstruct all these tiles not like that preferably though there we go let's try it again and let's turn this here off and then let's say deconstruct each and every one of those one right here there we go and the dupe should now start to deconstruct them and once again probably not all of them are going to work we have to probably do a couple of them a couple times but this one worked this one worked let's see are we lucky today these two here worked fine can we get the last two in apparently today's our lucky day all of them worked and as a matter of fact that is usually the case but again it can go wrong and you just have to redo it so let's get rid of these dupes right here because we don't need them anymore there we go you have fulfilled your duties thank you very much dupes and now we can get rid of this extra tile that we built here just something like this here and now we have our natural tiles in our farm and then last but not least we need to put those ladders in that i was talking about earlier something just like this here a ladder over each and every single one of them then we of course need some simple reed leads those are of course important without those we can plant anything i just put one wherever there we go and as soon as you have reached this stage right here you can bring in your pips with your critter drop off you just tell your dupes to wrangle them i of course going to spawn him in so let's see we can go pips and then let's grab us some pips and let's spawn in eight one two three four five six seven eight just like that then I go to filter destroy and I say buildings and now we let the game run. The pips are running around and as soon as one feels like it, they will grab one of those uh, seeds right here and plant it right here in our, what is this here, gold. So let's see what happens then. And this pip here just planted our first one so we can go ahead and get rid of the next one. So, and we're just going to play this game up until we are all the way over. So let me turn up the speed and then let's have a, a little bit of a montage right here. And the last pip has just picked up and here we go. Every single one is now planted and it took about a half a cycle. Night is just falling. You can see it. And now each and every one is planted as that should be. And our farm is ready to roll. Yes, you don't have to sit here like I did for a half a cycle and actually watch this happen. But you can just do it one by one by one. It's perfectly fine whenever you come by. Those pips here have a lot of calories. It will take a, a long time until they start to this. You can see it because those each birds just spawned in and those are wild. And I have one very short last thing for you. Warning, cuteness overload incoming. 
And I, of course, cannot make an episode about pips since the Fast Friends update without the new Guttle pips. Look at those things, aren't they just cute? Yes, here we have them. Those things are cute as hell. And of course, they're built with an insulated tile, so the color scheme fits perfectly. What do the Guttle pips actually do? Let's take a look at that as well. So we are not just looking at the cuteness, but actually learn something from it as well. They have a comfort range of 10 to 20 degrees and a livable range of negative 30 to 70. And they consume a little bit more thermal read or arbitrary than our normal pips and they produce a little bit less dirt and we can see that right here 12.5 kilograms and here's ada actually grooming all of our cuddle pips and look how happy they are those are literally the cutest addition to oxygen not included since the beginning of the game there is absolutely no question about it but that is all I have for you today, so if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that I say thank you and peace.